All right, here's the solution video for lab four. Let's see, we've got two problems. What I did was I copied this into an R markdown for lab four. So we're ready to go. Let's try this out. So consider the following example data for between subjects experiment with two groups A and B. We've got this example data right here. We run it. Um, oh. All right, well, let's add the Tibble library call. There it is, two groups. And we're being asked to use R to conduct a t-test and ANOVA on this data, then use R to prove that the results of both analyses are the same. For example, prove that the p-values are the same, prove that the f-value and t-value are related. This is something we talked about in lecture. Didn't talk about it in lab four, but Let's see if we can uh, do some generalization here and figure this stuff out. Okay, I'm going to add in the t-test. I just wrote that real quick. We've got our dependent variable column name as a function of group. We're setting the variance equal assumption to true because this is an independent sample t-test um, for a between subjects experiment connect the data to the data frame, run the analysis, there's your t-test. Okay, let's do the ANOVA. And I'll just copy this, change this to AOV. It's gonna be the same formula. This part no longer applies. Let's run that ANOVA, boom. All right, not what we're looking for. We wanna look at that ANOVA table. So let's put all of this into the summary function. And there we go. Okay, so we, we did the t-test and the ANOVA. We can look at the printouts. I can see that the p-values are the same. 0 0.0033 up here is 86. Well, it got rounded out uh, for this one. What I'd like to do is prove that the p-values are the same. So here's how I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna put each of these two things into a variable. So now we've got these things saved in our environment. Let's take a look at my t dollar sign p-value. There's the p-value. How about the ANOVA? Um, oh, can't see anything, that's too bad. We need to dive into this list. This list of one, unfortunately, needs something like this in front of it. Now, now we've jumped into the list, and if we put a dollar sign, we'll see the little pieces of the ANOVA table. So now we can look at that. Um, this value from the t-test is a single value. This one from the summary table happens to be a vector with two values. The first one has the p-value, the second one has nothing. So I just want to select that first value. So now we're printing it out as one. Okay, time to make a proof in R. Not much of one, but logical proof. I'm going to do the p-value from the t-test double equals, and I'm gonna put the p-value from the ANOVA summary. And now this is a logical comparison. The, um, the answer will be true if the numbers are the same, it will be false if they're not the same. Okay, so we get false. There's probably a rounding error here. 00338643, and this one, well, it's the same. Same number here that we're seeing on the screen. I'm guessing somehow behind the scenes, these are not coming out as the same value, maybe in floating point world. How about we do this? Let's round it to five digits. And we'll round this one. Digits equals five. Okay, that's good enough for me. I mean, I can see that they're the same numbers. There's some rounding error. And we've 
hack this together to make that proof. Okay, let's prove that F and T are related. Well, if you remember from class, the T value and the F value are related because T squared equals F. So if we take this T value, let's find the T value, and it is going to be the statistic, the T value here. Let's find the ANOVA, from the ANOVA table, the F value, and that's going to be the F value. All right, now how about we square this T value? Oh, look, 16.9 and there's the F value. So let's just put all of this together. And, okay, I guess we, I wonder what's going on here. If we turn this into a number, 16.9, we turn this one into a number, What number is that? 16.9? I mean, we can see that they're both 16.9. For some annoying reason, we are not getting R telling us that that is true. Well, I'm gonna play that same trick. I, I think there's probably some weird rounding stuff going on. Let's round this to one digit, which is the only one that's there, the 0.9. Okay, so we get our true value. So we've, we've shown here that t squared equals f. And I think this would be good enough for three points. So that's the first problem done. All right, number two asks you to take a look at the lab on ANOVA that's from my undergraduate stats lab manual. So here's the link. Um, let's go take a look at that can click this link. Here we are. Here's a lab on ANOVA. I mean, if you wanted to work through this whole thing, uh, it could be helpful for helping you understand ANOVA. Let's go back to the question for a quick second. I'm just pointing out that that lab is an example of getting data from a psych science paper where a one-factor ANOVA was used as part of the analysis. I'm asking you to load the data, conduct the ANOVA, report a ggplot of the means, and use PapaDraw to help you write a short results section reporting the ANOVA result. Um, so let's see if we can do this in a quick way. This will give us some experience getting some data, loading it, and doing all these things. And we're not going to spend too much time on what the study is actually about, but I will briefly talk about it. So. My version of this study is how to not think about bad memories by playing Tetris. Um, effectively, uh, people watched a film that had some traumatizing, it was supposed to be a, a there, there would be examples of violence and things like that, th things that you might not want to remember. So in this experiment, participants watched a video like that and then the researchers uh, measured how many intrusive memories from the video people had later. So you watch this video and then later on you're, you're thinking about the weird stuff that happened in that video. That would be an intrusive memory. So they ran an experiment with four conditions. And the question was, would some of their conditions reduce the number of intrusive memories? Here was a control group. So people watched the video and they didn't really do anything. And we measured how many intrusive memories they had. Um, in this group, participants watched the video and then they played Tetris for a while, that video game. Uh, and then there's a couple other conditions. Reactivation, um, this involves thinking about some of those occurrences from the video. And this is um, thinking about some of those unwanted memories and also playing Tetris. So there's, I mean, briefly, there's these four different conditions. 
the big question is, is the number of intrusive memories that you're having going to change depending on these conditions? All right, so that's the experiment. We should expect to get some data that has numbers of intrusive memories in each of these conditions, all right? And then um, maybe a graph of the data and uh, an ANOVA result. So let's check this out. If you wanted to look at the paper, you can download it right here. And here's the paper. You can get it from Psych Science. What we need is the data. You can get the data here. Also, from last semester, remember that folder of open data files? Well, the data is in that folder too. So get the data and put it into our studio. I'm going to do that right now. All right, I'm working in this lab solutions folder. I just made a data folder. Here's where my lab for RMD is located. The data folder now contains the CSV file for the experimental data we're looking at. So that's uh, right here. And I'm going to load it in in just a second. So let's do that, I guess, right now. The first thing we need to do, load the data. All right. If you want to follow along with this lab, it should walk you through all the things you need to do. I'm going to use the data.table library. I'm just copying that right in. Let's load data table. And we're going to read the data in. using the fread function. And this is actually the same location on my computer where this file would be, but let's just pick it, data, and that's, that's exactly where this is. So that data folder is in relation to the location of my lab for RMD. So if I do this, press play, I should have loaded the data into the variable, and I called this one all data. So we can take a look at it. Okay, so there's a bunch of stuff here, um, and we're not going to look at this too closely. In future labs, we will talk about looking at data more closely, but in this example, we're going to just kind of quickly try to accomplish some of the things that I'm asking you to do here. So we did the first part, we loaded the data. All right, well, now let's conduct the ANOVA. Okay, a bunch of things have to happen here. So let's just roll through the lab a little bit. We need to figure out which column is representing the independent variable. And um, let's see, okay. I'm reading this, I'm seeing there's, is there a, a column in the data? Let's see, condition, all right. I've determined this actually by uh, a little trial and error, but there's four conditions here. These are the four different conditions from the experiment. And uh, they're labeled one, two, three, four. It could be useful to relabel those things so that we can, they're sort of human readable. So I'm just gonna do um, a little bit of that. So now when we look at it, it's gonna, we're going to see which groups people are in. So that's useful. So we've got our one column with the independent variable. Notice there's lots of stuff in here. Um, this open data contains a bunch of things that the researchers measured. And um, in this example here, we're going to look at a dependent variable called days one to seven number of intrusions. So this is a measurement of the number of unwanted memories people had in days one to seven after watching, after watching this movie and doing one of those four conditions. So um, let's first of all, um, so what am I doing here? Okay, we're going to 
in, in the order of this um, lab, we're, we're creating a, a plot first. So this would show the means of the data in each condition. Um, we could do that. I, I typically would do that first, actually. So maybe, maybe I should change this to report a plot before you do the ANOVA. Well, let's do the ggplot right now for fun. And our x variable will be condition, our y variable. That was called, let's see if we can find it in here, days one to seven number of intrusions. It's kind of a mouthful. I wonder if it will pop up. Just gonna go and copy that from here. Put that in and let's do this trick we've learned. We can use GeoMBAR. We can say instead of stat identity, so we're not gonna actually compute the means here. Um, we can say stat summary function equals mean and position equals dodge. Let's see what this does. Couldn't find ggplot, right. Gotta load it. All right. Um, that graph is kind of hard to see right now. Let's make it easier to see. So we got five, two, four, something like that. Um, how does that compare to what we're seeing over here? Yeah, those are the same values. Um, this one has the dots, which if we wanted to do that too, we could put that in there. So something like that. So we've made our, our graph. What our question is, is uh, are the means of these different conditions different? And we're going to conduct an ANOVA to answer that question. Now, we've seen how to do the ANOVA in this lab. In this case, it's a one-factor ANOVA. We need the name of the column of the dependent variable. That's this one. The tilde. And the name of the column, the independent variable. That one is called condition. Now we connect the data to the data frame, which is called all data. And if we run this, there's the ANOVA. Now I'm going to just call it my AOV. And there's the there's a, a saved variable. If I wanted to print out the ANOVA, I could do that. Oops. Uh, there we go. This should be, I think, probably what we find over here somewhere. Let's scroll down, take a look at that table. Whoops. So we've got 368. Yeah, these values are looking the same. If you were to go uh, download the PDF, you, we, we would find that we've successfully reproduced the values that were in the analysis of the original paper. And um, here's an example of printing out the ANOVA table in a, in a nice way. We learned in, in the lab how we could use Papa Jaw for this. And what I'm asking you to do though is simply, so we've loaded the data, conducted the ANOVA, reported a ggplot of the means, and used Papa Jaw to help you write a short results section reporting the ANOVA result. Now, I'm, I'm not asking for much here. Here's what I'd like to see. And this is not an example of writing a good result section. Um, this is just an example of doing some of the basic stuff, like write a sentence with the F value. That's all I'm looking for. And I wanna show you how R can make that part really easy, especially using Papa Jaw. So we're going to lo load the Papa Jaw library. And we learned about the APA, APA print function. 
And what we put in here is the my AOV. This is the variable containing the ANOVA. And if we look at this, we can see that there's a bunch of options that we could use for printing out. The one that we want to use is this one, the full results um, for the condition variable. So something like this. Um, I'm just going to comment this out because I'm going to use this in a moment. Now, um, I can't remember what actually happened in the ANOVA. I'm just going to quickly run this summary so that we can should be able to look at it. All right. So, okay, there was an F value of 3.79. The degrees of freedom for the grouping variable was 3, which makes sense because there's 4 minus 1 degrees of freedom. And the degrees of freedom for the within variable was 68. Now, if you had an alpha criterion of 0.05, you would say that uh, this result, this kind of F value, wouldn't have been obtained by chance, so you're going to reject the null hypothesis. Now, what did I say before? I'm going to go um, look at this from the lab, and I'm just going to copy this. Um, you know, this is a, I'm plagiarizing myself here, uh, but that's okay. You might say something like, we submitted the mean intrusive memories for the week from each subject in each condition to a one factor between subjects ANOVA. With intervention type, and then we're listing the levels of that those interventions as the sole independent variable. That's kind of a long sentence, but it basically says, that the means were submitted to a one-factor ANOVA and what the factor was, all right? And that's what we've done up here. Now, the next question would be, for the factor of interest, I'm calling that intervention type right here. Up here, we called that condition. Um, the big question is, was there an effect of intervention type or not? Well, based on the ANOVA, where we found a F value with an associated P value uh, that was smaller than 0 0.05, we would say something like, we found a main effect of intervention type. Okay, that's pretty straightforward. And then we're going to write the ANOVA result using the APA style right now, which is the F, the degrees of freedom, the F value, the mean squared error value, and the P value. Now, you would normally have to just look at the summary table like this, and then just write those values in. I don't want to do that. I don't want to make a mistake. So I'm going to use inline R code just like this. Whatever I put inside of here will be R code that gets executed and printed into the document. This piece from Papaja, we could put right here. And uh, just as a reminder, this thing will print out all that stuff for you. So let's knit, take a look at what we get. So there it is. We found a main effect of intervention type, and it prints out the ANOVA for you. All right, that was loading in some data, making a graph, running the ANOVA, writing a quick result section, using PapaJaw to help you write that F value. That's all for the Lab 4 assignment.